All right, to get things started and all warmed up, I'm basically going to talk you through the first example. It's already done, so you can just watch. You should have had this one done. It was pretty easy, but I'm going to work out most of the odds, basically up to number 17. You should be turning in numbers 1 through 10 by the end of class, and then the rest are due tomorrow. Um, yes, I'm going to check that you copied down the ones I show you, and um, yes, I'm going to grade the other ones for accuracy. There's really no excuse for getting them done because... You have this to show you and you have the answer key attached, so you have the answers there as well. So when you're dividing, you want to just know what everything's called. So this piece right here that you are dividing initially is your div dividend. It goes in your numerator and numerator has an N in it and so does the word dividend and it goes inside your radical and your divisor is your denominator and it's also what goes on the outside. So I think when you go outside, you can wear a visor to cover up the sun from your eyes. Um, so I wrote it out as a rational expression and then I rewrote it again in long division form right here. Then when we're dividing, as we talked about in class yesterday, we're going to do a line leader divided by a line leader. Well, those aren't real phrases. We should really say leading term by leading term. We're going to start there and everything else kind of goes along with it. m squared divided by m, well m squared is m times m. Anything over itself is 1. We reduce. We get m. That m goes right there. You take that top number and you multiply it, or expression, and you multiply it by the divisor. That's where I got m squared minus 8m. Then every single time you're going to say out loud to yourself, parentheses, minus sign, underline, cancel. Negative 7m minus negative is plus, so plus 8m gives me a positive m. Bring down the minus 11, and we repeat the process. So what do we end up doing? This leading term m divided by that leading term m, which came from right there, so right there is 1, we wrote the one up there, 1 times my divisor is another m minus 8, but parentheses, minus sign, underline, cancel, negative 11 plus 8 is negative 3. That should be my remainder. Now before I move on, I did a little bit of a check. I showed a check in one class yesterday. If I didn't show your class or if you weren't paying attention, a way to check your answer, and this only works when you're dividing by a linear binomial with a coefficient of 1. Perfect. So you take your divisor and you set it equal to zero and you solve and you, we got m equals 8. You take that number and you plug it into your dividend for m. So I get 8 squared minus 7 times 8 minus 11. I'm going to show my work nicely. I like to go from left to right because you should recognize some numbers. But I'll get 64 minus 56 minus 11. 64 minus 56, I got 8. And then 8 minus 11, 8 positive, negative 11, that's these right over here if you look. Negative 3, you should get your remainder. If you do, you're probably right. So what's my answer going to be? Well, up top, I have m plus 1, and remainder I have negative 3. So I first rewrote it as a rational expression. m squared minus 7m minus 11 over m minus 8. That's my division question. Equals quotient m plus 1 and then plus negative 3 which I can write minus 3 over m minus 8. Now what else did I show on this paper? I did also show m minus m, I'm sorry, m over m is 1 because it's m to the first over m to the first. When you divide you subtract exponents m to the 0, m to the 0 is 1. This also shows you why anything to the 0 equals 1 in case you're ever wondering. We've gone over that before. Another way to check, this is going to be what I'll call um, check option number two. Check number two has to do with uh, elementary school style of changing a mixed number into an improper fraction. So when you were in elementary school, you learned that you had to do 3 times 7 plus 2 over 7 to change this mixed number into an improper fraction. 3 times 7 was 21 plus 2. So 23. 23 over 7, that's my improper. Now what does this really mean? Um, 3 and 2 sevenths. That's how you would say that. With words I wrote out the and. 3 and 2 sevenths. And in math, it's plus. It's addition. So what I have really, when you were in elementary school, and you wrote out 3 and 2 sevenths without that plus sign. Sorry, trying to open this highlighter. I'm really struggling here. When you try to write that out, it would really be that right over there. 
actually addition, but we never wrote that out in elementary school for some strange reason, or at least I didn't. Maybe your teacher was better. Um, nowadays, if I asked you to combine these, you would combine them by finding a common denominator. The 3 is over a 1, so I'm going to multiply on top and bottom by 7, which will be my least common denominator. 3 times 7 is 21. 21 over 7 plus 2 over 7. Well, it's 21 plus 2 all over 7, 23 over 7. So what happens is you end up multiplying that number, the 3, by 7, which is that number, and adding that number, which is the exact process we use over there. So you could do the same thing on my answer. Here's my main part of the quotient. Here is my numerator, denominator, my little proper fraction, and this is my whole number. Big whole number, main quotient part, times denominator, plus top, which is really minus because it's negative 3. How do I multiply those? You have to use FOIL or distribution, really. I FOILed those out right over here. I used distribution first, outers, inners, last, and then the negative 3 carries along. Combined all my like terms, left it over at minus 8, got back the original problem. So it's another way to check your work. And the rest of this video, I basically work it out along with you. But if you feel like you got a really good idea of what you're doing, you could just do your work and check your answers with the answer uh, sheet, which is attached at the end of the worksheet. All right? All right, this example right here, starting the same way, n squared divided by n. We're dividing this term by this term to start. That gives you just an n. It's a linear term. It's going to get written on top of the linear terms. So that's a 1n. We don't need to write the 1. Then we multiply this by the divisor on the outside. That gives us n squared plus 5n. From there, parentheses, minus sign, underline, and cancel. We do our subtraction. 10n minus the 5n. You should not be getting 15. You should be getting uh, 5. I almost wrote 15. n plus 18 drops down. So that comes down right here. Now we're going to divide this one, this leading term, 5n, by the n out there. And that gives us 5. Plus 5, constant term, gets written above all the other constant terms. All quadratics, all linear all constant. Take the 5, multiply it, distribute it to that binomial. What do we get? 5n plus 25. Again, parentheses, minus sign, underline, cancel. I'm going to look for that in your work, so make sure you have that. 18 minus 25. Well, 18 minus 18 is 0. So then I need 7 more, so I'm at negative 7. We're at the end of the line, so there's my remainder. Sometimes you'll have a test generator or the back of a book or a professor who will write your remainders just R negative 7. Um, sometimes you'll be using the remainder theorem for something, but we're going to write it out as an equation here. So I'm going to write my answer as follows. I'm going to rewrite my division problem as a fraction n squared plus 10 n plus 18 over n plus 5 is equal to so I divided by that n plus 5 this one is part of my quotient n plus 5 my remainder is negative 7 so minus 7 over careful this negative kind of minus sign blends in with the fraction bar minus 7 over and plus 5. One more time if you wanted to check your work. I'm going to check it this time by changing it back. You're going to do big times bottom plus top even though it's not necessarily bigger. So n plus 5 times n plus 5 in my head I know is n squared plus 10 n plus 25 plus negative 7 or minus 7 over n plus 5. And what will that give me? So just labeling this is my check. What does that give me? n squared 
plus 10 n plus 18 over n plus 5. That is the original problem. So we're good to go. Now you try number 4 and also try number 5. So pause the video and then don't come back until you're done with number 5. Make sure you have an idea of what you're doing. Alright? Alright, so for this one I got everything written down, but this time I um, decided to do the check first. So I did the first check I showed you, so I took the divisor and I set that equal to 0 and I got n equals 7. And then I evaluate the dividend at n equals 7 at that number, so I put in that number and I evaluate and I get 7, coincidentally, as my answer. That means positive 7 should be the remainder when we're done with this division. So we're going to see if that's what we got. And if you did get that, then you're good. And you could probably fast forward and go to the next one. Um, if you did not get that, then you want to check out what I'm showing you now. n squared divided by n. First leading divided by leading. So that gives me n above here. n times n plus minus 7. n squared minus 7n. Parentheses. Minus sign underline, cancel, minus negative becomes plus. Negative 3 plus 7 is going to be positive 4n minus 21 drops down. 4n divided by n, that one on the outside, is 4. So plus 4 right there. 4 times n minus 7 is 4n minus 28. Don't force positives and negatives in the wrong places because you know things are supposed to cancel. It will happen organically if you do what you're supposed to do. Alright, don't try to force it. Parentheses, minus sign, underline, cancel. Minus a negative, well, that becomes plus. Negative 21 plus 28 is positive 7. So, we're in good shape. So, for our answer, out of good habit, writing it down as n squared minus 3 and minus 21 over n minus 7 is equal to n plus 4, my quotient part right up there, and then here positive 7 does not divide, so it stays over my divisor, n minus 7. So your real answer is right over there. If you got that, good job. So now go ahead, go on, make sure number 6 looks pretty good. If you did it already, maybe do one of the checks to see if you're right. Number 6, then go ahead to number 7, and you can pop back in and check if uh, you have number 7 correct. If you don't, you have to copy down the correct work, okay? Alright, I got a little bit of a head start on this one. So I wrote down the problem, and I did my inside leading term by my outside leading term, Divi dividend and divisor, I got R, wrote it on top, multiplied it by my divisor, wrote it underneath, and now I'm just going to pick up from this step, so make sure you have this, okay, I'm looking for it, parentheses, minus sign, underline, and cancel, 14 minus 8, 6R, didn't mean to continue using purple, but guess I will now, bring down the plus 38, dividing again, 6R divided by R on the outside is 6. Plus 6 right over here. Multiply that 6 by that right over there. 6R plus 6 times 8 is 48. I guess I'll switch colors. So parentheses, minus sign, underline, cancel. 38 minus 48 is negative. 10. So your remainder should be a negative 10. So how do we write out our answer nicely? Once again, you should have um, r squared plus 14r plus 38 over r plus 8 will be equal to r plus 6 minus 10 over r plus 8. That is your answer right there. 
and I'll do the second check for this one now. And I should do this times this, all right? The big times the bottom. I could do that in my head. I hope that you can too. So this is check numero two. So I'm going to change that there. So r plus six times r plus eight, I get r squared plus six r and eight r. Well, that's 14 r last times last plus. 48. That's big times bottom plus top, so plus negative 10 or minus 10 all over same bottom, r plus 8. Combine some like terms there, we get r squared plus 14r plus 38 over r plus 8. And as long as it matches, we're good. And it looks like we are in tip top shape. So you definitely got it right. So there's no reason why you shouldn't get a perfect score. So go ahead, do number eight if you haven't already, or check it using one of these two methods. Maybe practice both of them. They're going to both be important further down the line. Um, and then check out your number nine. And if it's good, again, fast forward to where you need to be. All right, so for this one, I kind of jumped ahead a little bit more. I wrote down the example in this form right here. I divided 2x squared by 2x right on the side, left me with just an x this time. If these numbers don't match up, it's possible that you'll end up with fractions over here. Again, this is why I told you, and I told you this is why in class, that writing the step on the side is really handy. Stop saying to yourself, 2x times what is 2x squared? Not really the best method. Because when you start having fractions that don't divide evenly, you're gonna be confused. Like what if this was a five? and this was a three. You know, it gets awkward. So you're better off and more precise this way. So I got x multiplied it by my divisor, got that, parentheses, minus sign, underline, cancel, negative 17 minus positive three is negative 20, and I brought down my negative 38. I'm gonna pick it up from there. New leading term, negative 20x divided by outer leading term, and that gives me a negative 10 right there. So minus 10, I'm gonna write right there multiply my negative 10 um, by my divisor. Negative 20x minus 30. From there, parentheses, minus sign, underline, cancel. Negative 38 minus a negative is plus, so plus 30 is negative 8. That's my remainder right there. So what will my answer be? I guess I could write it out um, just as 2x squared minus 17x minus 38 over, rational expression right over here, 2x plus 3. That is equivalent to x minus 10, which is invisible over 1, minus 10 over, that's my remainder, which, oh no, I'm kidding, looked at the wrong spot, 8 was my remainder. So minus 8 over what I was dividing by, so 2x plus 3. Again, you can memorize this times this plus this over this should be my answer. Here, I don't have a leading term of uh, 1, so I can't really do my other tr trick. In some ways, it could still work, um, but I don't want to get into that right now. Um, so instead, I'm going to do the other trick. So check number two. X minus 10. This one you might have to write out because you don't have a leading coefficient of one for both of these little linear binomials. We have a two, and sometimes it's a little bit more concentrating. So big times bottom plus top over bottom. These do not cross out. No, 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 no. Okay? You can't do that, that would make absolutely no sense, so please don't do that. That is going to expand, so you'll have 2x squared, outer is plus 3x, minus 20x, minus 30, minus 8, over 2x plus 3. Clean that up, we have 2x squared, minus 17x, minus 38, over 2x plus 3. 
that matches my original problem. So I feel good about my answer. Now you do number 10 and if you're good you turn that in. And the rest of the assignment you have to finish on your own and it's due by tomorrow. And I'll continue a little bit more video to help you out on a few more examples. Alright, so for this one I had some notes started over here for us. It's like number 10, so if you struggled with number 10 by staying here and watching number 11, you're helping yourself out. Um, my dividend, which is my numerator or the expression inside of my division symbol, was x squared minus 74. And if you pay attention, you have a quadratic term, you have a constant term. However, you need a linear term. Whatever term you start with, you need to account for all the terms all the way down to your constant term. I need a linear term. So I'm going to put in a placeholder, hold its place, I'm going to put plus 0x. You can put plus 0x, you can put minus 0x, it makes no difference. Um, get it? Difference? Some difference. Okay, so I'm going to write plus 0x right over there. And I'm just going to carry on and divide from that step. So what will I get next? Well, I'm going to do x squared divided by x, x squared divided by x, and that gives us x. Write it above that. x times x minus 8, well, that's just going to be x squared minus, I don't know why I wanted to write plus there, sorry, minus 8x. Make sure you have your parentheses. Sorry, I'm being a little extra parentheses, minus sign, underline, cancel. Now, minus a negative is plus. Zero plus 8x is positive 8x. Watch out for that. Don't mess that up. Bring down the next term, minus 74. New binomial, I'm going to divide 8x by x, and that gives me 8. I'm going to write plus 8 up there. Multiply 8x minus 64 parentheses minus sign underline cancel minus negative is plus negative 74 plus 64 is negative 10 remainder so my answer is x squared minus 74 over x minus 8 is equivalent to x plus 8 minus 10 over x minus 8. So there's my answer. We can do check number 1. Or don't check it all if you're that confident, but I'm going to check it for you guys. So I'm going to take my divisor, set it equal to 0, I get 8. I'm going to fill 8 into my dividend or my numerator. So you're just thinking in your head or on paper, 8 squared minus 74. And that's 64 minus 74. It should equal your remainder when you're done, and it does. So we're good to go, and we can move on. All right, if you completely panicked when you saw this example, um, don't. Don't be uh, judgy. You're just being judgy because you see an extra term or a higher degree. It is exactly the same thing with one tiny additional step. It is not the end of the world. So I did the check first. So I set my divisor equal to 0. I got negative 2. I filled in negative 2. Please, this is not negative 14 squared. No, 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 no. All right? Too many of you guys are messing up your order of operations, and it makes me a little bit uh, stressed out. So make sure you do that correctly, okay? So I just highlighted that a little. Draw a little attention to it. If you have to hit pause and think about it, um, it does matter. All right. Um, anyway, so over here, n cubed divided by n gives me n squared. It goes above the 7n squared. n squared. Multiply it. I get n to the third, because it's to the first. You add your exponents. Plus 2n squared. Binomial um, underneath. So parentheses, minus sign, underline, cancel. If it doesn't cancel, you're not doing it right. 7 minus 2, 5n squared, bring down the term, plus 14n. Now, 5n squared divided by n, well that is going to give me 5n. It's 
going to go up there, plus 5n. 5n times n plus 2. That's going to give us 5n squared plus 10n. Parentheses, minus sign, underline, cancel. 14 minus 10 is, I don't want it to be in purple, 4. If you're listening to the video and you have sound on, you keep hearing me say that same thing over and over, well, that's good because hopefully it sticks in your head. 4n and bring down the plus 3. Now, what do we do? Got 4n and you divide it by n and we get 4 plus 4. Multiply the 4 by n plus 2. 4, this is driving me crazy. 4 plus, oh no, 4n, plus 8, parentheses, minus sign, underline, cancel. Now I have a 3 minus 8, negative 5. Negative 5 should be my remainder, yes or no? Yep. Doing good. Answer. I don't think I've been writing the word answer every time I do this, but try to get a good habit. Um, we're going to have n squared plus 5n plus 4 minus 5 over n plus 2. And that is your solution. I didn't write that it equals um, that cubic polynomial of four terms over this linear binomial as a fraction equals that expression. All right. In the next example, I'll use check number two on it, but try 14 on your own, try 15, and then check back in. All right, I got a little bit of a head start on this one as well. So you should be able to follow um, how I got here. If not, press pause and you got to figure it out, okay? Uh, next step, I'm going to pick up where I left off. So negative 5v squared divided by v is negative 5v minus 5v up here, multiply, negative 5v squared minus 15v, got my parentheses, minus sign, underline, cancel, minus negative is plus, negative 14 plus 15 is positive 1, you don't really have to write it, but positive 1v, bring down, minus 5. 1v, or just v, divided by v, well, that's 1 plus 1 right there, 1 times v plus 3 is v plus 3, parentheses, minus sign, underline, cancel, negative 5, minus 3 is negative 8 as my remainder, so that means my answer is my quadratic trinomial of v squared minus 5v plus 1 minus 8 over v plus 3. I'm going to do check number 2 on this one. Check number 2. I showed you two types of checks. Check number 2 we're going to do right now, we're going to do my quotient, which is this whole part over here times the thing I was dividing by plus the top which is minus 8 really all over the bottom and I should get back the original problem so I guess we're gonna see what happens here here I'm going to show more work so you're also getting a bit of a review of multiplying quadratic trinomials by linear binomials so if you struggled with that here's some more practice for you the only way you're going to get better is if you practice. Don't just watch me do it. Big times bottom plus top or basically this right there. And that will all be over V plus 3. Alright, on the expansion over here, V squared times each of those things, then negative 5V, and then 1. V squared times each of these is V to the third plus 3v to the second 
v squared is done. Negative 5v, so minus 5v squared. I'm going to go vertical a little bit. Minus 15v. Now 5v is done. 1 times v is plus 1v. So 1, I know my 1 sometimes look like 7, sorry. Um, plus 3. And then I still have that little minus e on the side, so I could put that right over here. Um, and then that's all going to be on top of the v plus 3. But if I add those down, what do I get? v to the third minus 2v, positive 3 minus 5. Negative 15 plus 1 is minus 14v. Positive 3 minus e is minus 5 all over b plus 3. So the question is, is that the same as the original question? Well, if you look up, it is. So we're good. That's it right over there. Negative 2, negative 14, negative 5, b plus 3. Looks great. Now in the next example uh, I do for you, I'm going to show you a totally different type of check. It's going to involve using uh, Desmos. So we'll look at that in a minute. Try 16 by yourself and then uh, come back here when you need 17. Alright, so just quickly <clears throat> for this one I already worked it out. At this point you should have it pretty much down. Um, you had to reorder your expressions into standard form but other than that it works the same exact way. I have all my work here. Be careful when you guys start getting negatives in here. You mess up a bit, so pause this and check your work if you did something incorrect. Now, I'm going to show you another option for checking these, um, and it involves Desmos. I'm going to show you on my phone. So the first thing I did was I took the original problem, and I graphed it in Desmos. Now, I typed it in. Make sure you have parentheses around your numerator. Make sure once you hit enter, it looks like this. Now, I want to see a little bit better what this looks like, so I might have to zoom out a little bit. And it looks a little intense. Um, I might want to change my window. It doesn't really matter too much. But here, more or less, is what a chunk of my graph looks like. You don't really know what these are yet if you haven't learned rational functions. But it is what it is. Now, how do I check this? So I'm going to go, um, I guess if I hit the home button, I could do that. You don't really have to. Um, I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to, what am I trying to do here? Um, oh, back up here type in my answer. When I type in my answer, another color will probably pop up. And I'm using x's instead of k's. So I'm going to write x squared minus 7x. So minus 7x minus 9. Now, for this part, I have a fraction. So plus, now even if I back up a little bit, um, backspace, that parabola there is pretty close to the one that was there before. It's kind of interesting, that parabolic shape there. But I'm going to do plus 9 over, so watch where your fraction's going. I'm going to put x plus 3 on bottom, x plus 3. If it overlaps it perfectly, you probably have the right answer. And we'll go into this further later, but really it's just like looking into um, checking and graphing something in standard form and then checking vertex form. Obviously, if it's a parabola and you have the same equation in different forms, you should get the same picture. So it's just showing you that they're equivalent statements. Here you have an improper fraction, and here you kind of have a mixed number, but they both represent the same information. So they should overlap each other. So I just zoomed out a little, and there it is. Okay? Exact same picture. So you should be able to finish the rest of this on your own. Good luck.